Do you have a particular wine that really rings your chimes? Sometimes there are people, places, or things that you have an immediate affinity for or attraction to. That's the way it was with the wine Chateauneuf de Pop. The first time I tasted a Chateauneuf de Pop was in 1974. It was a vintage 68. The producer was B&G. You know, there are some people and some wines that embody the real plus the ideal, sort of earthy with spiritual roots that stand up and even thrive under adversity. For me, that's the standard to strive for. Keep in mind, at any time, if you find this interesting or helpful, click like or subscribe and hit the little bell so you're notified when I post other videos. Also, make sure you share this video with your friends. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Now, as a quick side note, the wine Chateauneuf de Pop is affectionately known as just Chateauneuf, or CDP. There are two, even three underlying reasons why I absolutely love Chateauneuf. First, you have those earthy, layered aromas on the nose. It's unique and rich, but then there's that first sip. When it touches your lips and moves onto your palate, you'll experience its evolving layered taste. It embodies all the good characteristics of a well-balanced, world-class red wine. It's sophisticated, yet down-to-earth and extremely versatile. Hold on just a second. That's good. I mean, really good. We don't have enough time to get into the details about the bottle, but Chateauneuf's bottles are unique. They have the family crest or the crest of the chateau or vineyard built into the bottle. Plus, Chateauneuf de Pop parallels life like no other wine. It's a champion. Actually, Chateauneuf de Pop is a wine, a region, and a little village on the Rhone River in the south of France. You know, with its narrow, windy cobblestone streets, outdoor cafes, restaurants, bakeries, ancient ruins, and a 360 degree view of over 250 different vineyards, it's definitely worth a visit. You know, its name comes from the time when the papacy moved from Rome to Avignon, France in 1309. There were eight different popes who served in Avignon until 1378. The village sprang up and was where the pope had his summer residence or chateau. The first pope was Pope Clement V. He was an avid wine lover. <laughs> Between Clement's love for wine and the need for sacramental communion wine, vineyards were planted. You know, life doesn't get much better than that. Living in a castle, giving communion, and drinking some really great wine. God, what a life! Actually, he was such a great guy and so revered that the village and region took its name from the Pope. When translated, Chateauneuf de Pop means the new house of the Pope or the Pope's new castle. Did I say it's a really good wine? That is an understatement. Chateauneuf de Pop is world renowned. At least one of the producers from this region will receive recognition for making one of the top 10 wines in the entire world each and every year. One of the other things that I love about this wine is how it parallels life. It lives in the middle of the real, but gives us a glimpse of the ideal. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at the soil, water, and wind. There are three basic types of soil in Chateauneuf. Galais Roulets, sand, and limestone. Galais Roulets means literally rolled pebbles. 
in my view, there's nothing pebble about this thing. These rocks were created and deposited thousands of years ago as glaciers carried and crushed them through France. The Rhone River smoothed them into what they are today. Many of them are the size of a human fist. These rocks appear to be the absolute worst soil anything can grow in. They absorb the sun's heat during the day and by mid-afternoon they're so hot you can barely walk in the vineyard. The Galais create another problem. They establish a barrier above the soil and water table that makes it extremely difficult for the vines to get the precious water and nutrition needed to exist. The region gets an average of 27 inches of rain per year, and that's not a lot, especially compared to, say, uh, 38 inches in Chicago or um, 46 inches in the Willamette Valley in Oregon. Now, in the summer, when there is rain, the water evaporates once it hits the hot rocks. This eliminates the vine's ability to take in precious, vital nutrition from the rainwater. Another factor that will blow you away is the Mistral winds. These are northeast winds that rage through southern France. During certain times of the year, these northeast winds are funneled through the Rhone River Valley for days, weeks, and even months at a time. You can feel the difference as you're standing in the mid-afternoon sun. The wind starts easy and intensifies. Before you know it, they're whipping south through Chateauneuf, past Avion, across Languedoc, and over the Mediterranean coast. By the time the winds reach Chateauneuf, you can experience 45 to 50 mile an hour sustained winds, with winds easily reaching 115 miles per hour. Yeah, as a point of reference, hurricane force winds are 79 miles per hour. At 115 miles an hour, that makes these winds equivalent to a Category 3 hurricane. Having grown up in Miami, it's easy for me to say they're incredibly destructive. These winds transition from refreshing to unnerving to massively destructive within hours. In the early spring, the mistrels wreak havoc as they destroy the tender new shoots on the grapevines. Later in the spring, it destroys as much as 30% of the vine's flowers, the precursors to the young grapes. If you think bad soil, little or no water, and devastating winds are bad, in 1866, like the vast majority of Europe, all the vineyards in Chateauneuf were almost completely destroyed by the phylloxera disease. You know, dejected and depressed, growers lost their livelihood, gave up, left the area, and abandoned their vineyards. It took decades for the region to rebound. The vineyards were not rapidly replanted at the time because it cost too much both in money and time. Seventy years later, in 1936, growers began to get their feet back on the ground. Seventy years. You know, our pandemic hasn't lasted 2% of that time. Dormant for 70 years. Can you even imagine how you would feel if this season of coronavirus lasted 70 years? Now, in an attempt to save what they had left of the grapes, incredibly strict guidelines were established to give the grapes a fighting chance. You know, when you stop to think about it, you begin to wonder, how can the grapes in Chateauneuf even exist, much less produce some of the best wines in the entire world? This is where I absolutely love the story of Chateauneuf, the people, the grapes, and the wine. This is where the lives of grapes and people parallels. Here's where I find grapes and people are so much alike. This is where Chateauneuf, this is where we can become a champion. Like so much in life, destructive forces can bring both good and bad. So here's the beauty of this rocky soil. The sun scorches the galet during the day. The sun rays are absorbed. During the cool French nights, the galets slowly release the heat up to the underside of the vines and grapes. 
we find this horrible soil, the rocks and the process of heat transfer aid in the development and ripening of the fruit like no place else in the world. Also because the galets don't allow the rainwater to get to the vines, that causes the roots of the vines to struggle. The roots then end up going deep, deep in search of life-giving water and nutrition. <laughs> you know, isn't the natural world incredible? The hurricane strength winds, while they bring destruction, also helps moderate the intense temperature and dehumidify the climate. This stops or at least reduces the development of fungi, mildew, and other diseases. There were also those strict guidelines that were established to help protect the vines and the grapes. The vines have to be pruned so that they remain much lower to the ground than other vines. This is to protect the vines from the continuous fierce force of the winds that tear their way through the vineyards and through the region. The mistrals create an atmosphere unlike anywhere else in the world. It enables very unique grapes to grow here better than anywhere else. The rigid guidelines only allows nine red grapes to be grown in Chateauneuf. Grapes with intense fruit and flavor. Those strict guidelines gave and to this day give the vines and grapes a fighting chance, not just to live, but to excel. You know, that's sort of like America historically. Back in the day, schools didn't have fences around them. It was found in studies that kids would play close to the school buildings in large part for safety. It was seen that once fences were put up, the kids would play all the way out to the edge of the fence line. Now, even though it was much further away from the school building, the kids would venture out. These studies showed that fences, guidelines, provided safety, security, and confidence. <laughs> you know, the good book provides us with 10 main guidelines. They're not there to restrict life, but to grant us health, latitude, freedom, ideal relationships, safety, and security. Some people see guidelines as restrictive. Others see them as freeing. Guidelines in Chateauneuf not only give the grapes and the vines a fighting chance, they enable them to thrive. Thrive like no place else in the entire world. <laughs> so is Chateauneuf to pop good? Well, I'm sort of partial. After all, it is my favorite wine. Chateauneuf is one of the most versatile wines in the market. You can serve it with everything from grilled beef, veal, pork, uh, game, duck, sausage and lamb to stews and uh, braised dishes, casseroles and seafood. Um, you can also pair, it pairs well with different Asian dishes. You know, going back to the life parallel, all the factors that go into making your life and mine, both good and bad, when blended together, are critical, unique, and instrumental in creating the most phenomenal people in the world, you and me. Isn't it interesting how you can fall in love with someone, someplace, or something, and as time goes on, you begin to see the idiosyncrasies, the good and the bad, that makes them who they are, and before you know it, you begin to appreciate them more. Like Chateauneuf, grow and flourish where you're planted. Make the best of life. Play the hand you're dealt and do it with finesse, great friends, fabulous foods, and wonderful wine. Well, there you have it. Chateauneuf the pop in life. Listen, if you ever have a moment I'd love to visit and share a glass with you. Feel free to send me a direct message on social media or even shoot me an email. I'd love to know your world-renowned story, the good and the bad. In the meantime, if you got something out of this video, make sure you hit the like and 
please share this with someone who could use the encouragement. Check out the other videos on my channel and consider subscribing. Oh, and be sure to ring the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.